king, I would attend his leisure for a few words. Madame, I will. Lord's hair, all spent, for our desire is got without content. To safer to be that which we destroy them by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think of? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. Oh, oh, oh. we have scotched the snake, not killed it. Better be with the dead, or we to gain our peace of sent to peace than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Come on, gentle my lord, sleek o'er oh, your rugged looks, be bright and jovial amongst your guests tonight. So shall I, my love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence with both eye and hand. Unsafe the while that we must lave our honours in these flattering streams. Make our faces visits of our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. <laughs> Full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knows the Banquo and his fleets lives. But in them nature's copies not eternal. There's comfort yet, they are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Here, the bat had flown his cloistered flight. Here, black Hecate summons the shard-born beetle whose drowsy hums had rung in night's yearning peal. There shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? <laughs> Be innocent of the knowledge, dear, till thou afford the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens. The crow make wing to the rocky wood. Good things of day begin to droop and drowse while night's black agents to their prey do rouse. <laughs> Thou marvels at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. <laughs> ah, by roses. Give us a light there. Oh. Then tis he. His horses go about almost a mile. So most dead men do from hence to the palace gate making their walk. A light! A light! Tis he. There will be rain tonight. Let it come down. Fly good blades, fly thou space revenge! Or slaves! Each of you know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks, Thanks to your majesty. majesty. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we'll require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks they are welcome. See, both sides are even. Here, I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth. Anon, we'll drink a measure the table round. Oh, my face! Tis Banquo's then. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? <laughs> so it's cut. That I did for him. Oh, thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet, he's good. That did the like for his fleance. If thou didst it, thou art a non pareil. Monsieur, sir, uh, fleance escaped. Here comes my feet again! I had else been perfect! 
Old as the rock, founded as the marble, as broad and as general as the casing air! <laughs> now I am cabined, cribbed, confound, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo's safe. Safe in a ditch he bides, 20 trench gashes in his head, at least the death of nature. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies, the one that's fled, hath nature that in time will venom breathe. No thief for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold that is not of them vouched. While tis a making, tis given without welcome. To feed were best at home, from thence the source to meet is ceremony. Meeting will bear without it. Sweet remembrance, sir. Good digestion weighs on appetite and health on both. Won't please your majesty sit. Here now, our country's honor had been roofed. While the graced person of our banquo present, oh, may I rule the challenge for unkindness? Than pity for mischance. His absence lays blame upon his promise. Promise. Would it please your highness to grace us with your royal presence? Table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is that troubles thee? Which of you have done this? What? My done this? Thou cannot say I did it! Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray, keep seat. This fate is momentary. If you offend him, you shall extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. <laughs> Are you a man? I am a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire, authorized by her grand. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look put on a stool. Pretty! Look! See there! Behold! Look! Look! How say you? Why what care I if thou can not speak to? If our charnel houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, then our monuments shall be the moors of kites. What? Quite unmanned in folly. What had been shed here now? In the olden time, here, human statue purged the gentle wheel. I, and since too, Murders have been performed too terrible for the year. Times have been, the brains were out, the man would die, and there an end. But now they rise again with twenty mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I, I do forget. My most worthy friends... Do not muse at me, for I have a strange infirmity, <laughs> which is nothing to those that know me. Uh, come, love and joy to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Feel full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here to all, and he we thirst, and all to all. Ah! Avant and quit my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are marrowless. Thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. I think of this, good peers, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dares, I dare, approach thee like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the harken tiger. Take any shape but these, and my firm nerve shall never tremble. Or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. 
if trembling I inhibit thee, then protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow, unreal mockery, hence! Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray, I pray you, sit, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. You make me strange, when even to the disposition that I owe, when I think that you can behold such sights, and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine are blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you, speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Ongers and relations understood have by ways of maggot pies and chucks and rocks brought forth the secrets man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? Uh, how says you that Macduff denies us his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? No, I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them in his house that I keep a servant feed. And betimes, the weird sisters, more shall they speak. Come, we're to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the innate fear which wants hard use. We are but young indeed. Thrice the brinded cat hath mewed. Thrice and once the hedge pig whine. Harpia cries, tis time, tis time. How now, you black secret and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you, by that which you profess, however you come to know it, Though you untie the winds and let them fight the churches, though the yeasty waves confound and swallow navigation up, though the bladed corn be lodged and trees blown down, though our castles topple on their waters' heads, though our palaces and our pyramids do slope their heads to their foundation, though the treasure of nature's Germans tumble all together, even till destruction sickens, answer me what I ask you. Speak, demand, will answer. Say, if thou hast rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them. Let me see them. Macbeth, 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 beware Macduff, beware the Thane of Fife. Dismiss me. Enough. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Yet, one word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another, more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Had I three ears, I hear thee. Had be bloody, bold, and resolute, laugh to scorn the power of man, for none woman born shall ever harm Macbeth. And live, Macduff, what need I fear of thee? Yet I'll make assurances double sure, and take a bond of faith. Thou shalt not live. That I may tell pie of hearted fear it lies in sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king, and wears on his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it. Be lying proud and take no care. Who chafes, who frets. That will never be. Who can impress the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound roots. Sweet bowmans, good. Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place Macbeth shall live the lease of nature. Yet my heart drops to know one thing. Tell me, if thou art can tell so much, 
Will Banquo's issues ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be answered. I will be satisfied. Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall upon you. Let me know. Why sinks this cauldron? What noise is this? Show. 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 Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down! Thy other gold bound brow is like the first. Of Thy crown sears sear my eyeballs. Thy other gold bound brow is like the first. The third is like the former. Filthy hags. Why do you show me this? A fourth! Starred eyes. <laughs> what? Will the light stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet a seventh. I'll see no more, and yet an eighth appears who bears a glass which shows me many more, some of which twofold balls and treble spectres carry. <laughs> Tis true then, for the blood boat at Banquo spies upon me and points at them for his. Is this so? Aye, sir, all of this is so. But why stands my breath thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheery up his sprites and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound while you perform your <laughs> antics round that this great king may kindly say our duties did his welcome pay. <laughs> Time. Thou hast anticipated my dread exploits. The flighty purpose never is overtuck unless the deed go with it. From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart will be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, crown my thoughts with acts. Let it be taught and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon fight. But no more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. See, who comes here? My countryman. Yeah, I know him not. Bye. My ever gentle cousin, welcome hither. Sir, our men. I know him now. Good God, betimes remove the means to make of strangers. Stand Scotland where it does. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. Cannot be called our mother but our grave, where nothing but who knows nothing has once seen the smile, and where sighs and moans and shrieks that were in the air are made but not marked. We are coming thither. Gracious England have lent his good steward and ten thousand more like men, a greater and better soldier, none that Christendom gives out. Would I could answer such comfort with the like. But I have words which should be uttered out in the desert air, where hearing cannot latch them. What concern then? Is it the general cause, or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? Uh, no mind that's honest, but in it bears some woe, though the main part pertains to you alone. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quick me. Let me have it. Your castle was surprised. Your wife and children savagely slaughtered. To relate the matter were, on the query of these murdered deer, to add the death of you. Merciful heaven! Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers and bids the overfraught heart break. <laughs> oh, my children too! Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And, and I must be from thence. My wife killed too. I have said, be comforted. Let's make us medicines of this great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. What? All my pretty ones? Did you say all the foul guide? Oh, all my pretty chickens in their dam at one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. <laughs> I shall do so, but first I must feel it as a man. I cannot remember such, such things were that were that were most precious to me. 
Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Those sinful Macduff, they're all struck for thee, nor that I am. Not for their own demerits, but for mine fell slaughter on their soul. Heaven rest them now. Make this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it! Oh, I could play woman with mine eyes and brag it with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring thou this thing of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's length set him. Yet, here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. I will set down what comes from her to mark my remembrance the more strongly. Out, damned spot, out, I say. One, two, why then tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier of fear. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The thane of five had a wife. Where is she now? What go to, go to. You, you will know. these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, my lord, no more of that. You'll mar with all this starting. Go to, go to. You've known what you should not. She has spoken what she should not. I'm sure of that. Helen knows what she has known. Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh! What a cry is there. The heart is sorely charged. I shall not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. It's just pray, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Though I have known those who have walked in their sleep which have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands, put on your nightgown. I tell you yet again, Banco is buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Even so? To bed, to bed. There's a knocking at the gate. Come, 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 give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. The English force is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them for their dear causes, but to the bleeding and the grim alarm, excite the mortified man. Near yeah, Burnham Wood will we well meet them, that way they're coming. March we are, to give obedience where it is truly owed. Meet we the medicine of the sickly wheel, and like our country's purge, we pour in each drop of us. Well, so much as it needs, to dew the sovereign flower and drown the weeds, make we our march to Burnham. Why? Aye. Aye. All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. Get me my armor. Tis not needed yet. I put it on, send out more horses, scour the country round, and hang those that talk of fear, and give me my armor. How does your patient, Doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick-coming fancies that keep her from rest. <sighs> Cure of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the brain, and cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs heavy upon the heart? Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw physics to the dogs! I'll none of it! Come! Put my armor on! And give me my sword. What is this before us? We would have burned him. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Shall Thereby shall we shadow the number of our hosts and make air discovery and report of us. It, it shall, shall be done. done. We'll learn no other 
but that the confident tyrant keeps still and does it in. Tis his main hope, for advantage is to be given both greater and less have given him the revolt. Let our just censures attend the true event, and put we on industrious soldiership. The time approaches that will, with due decision, make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Thoughts speculative there and shall hope to relate, but certain issue strokes must arbitrate towards which advance the war! <laughs> Cry of women, my lord. Times have been. My senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek, and my fell of hair would at a dismal tree tice rouse and stir as though life were in it. I have supped full of horrors. Wherefore was that noise? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow <sighs> creeps in with its petty pace from day to day <laughs> to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays of lighted fools the way to dusty death out out breathe candle life is but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more it is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. As I stood my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham and anon, methought the wood began to move. Liar! Save! Let me endure your wrath, sir. If thou speak it false, upon the next tree thou shalt hang alive, till famine cling thee. Thy speech be soothed. I care not if thou dost so much for me. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not, Macbeth, till Burnham Wood remove the dunce's name. Come, wind, come, rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. Now, near enough, your leafy screens throw down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with your son, the right noble cousin, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and I shall take on what else remains to do, according to our order. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath, those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. <laughs> Tyrant, show thy face. If thou beest slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still. I cannot strike at wretched kerns whose arms are hired to bear their staves. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with unbattered edge I sheath again undeeded. There thou shouldst be Amid this clamour, that of greatest note seems bruited. Let me find him fortune more, I beg not. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? Whilst I see lips, the gashes do better upon them. Hellhound, turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But 
Get thee back. Thy soul is too charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. For I bear a charm life, which must not yield to one of woman born. <laughs> Despair thy charms, and let the angels whom thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb, <coughs> untimely ripped. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee as our rarer monsters are, painted on a pole and under it, here may you see the tyrants. I'll not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, nor be bathing in the rabble's class. Though Burnham Wood become the Dunsinane, and though thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I'll fight the last. <laughs> Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff, and down be he that first cries home! Enough! I would the friends you miss were safe return. Macduff is missing. And your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He lived but till he was a man. Which living and proof he showed in the unshrinking station which he fought. Then, like a man, he died. Why, that God soldier be he? If I had as many sons as I had has, I would not wish them to a fairer death. And so, his knell is nulled. He's worth more sorrow. Ah, he's worth no more. They say he paid his price and paid his score. And so, God be with him. Here comes new comfort. Hail, King! For so thou art. Behold, here where stands a usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee encompassed with thy kingdom's pearls who speak their salutation in, the, in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, Hail King of Scotland! We will not spend a large expanse of time in reckoning with your several loves and making us equal with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls. The first of Scotland in ever such an honour named. Yay! What's more to do, that we be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher yeah. and his fiend-like yeah. queen, yeah. who as did thought by self and violent means took off her own life. This, and what needful else remains, we will perform by the grace of grace in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and each to one, whom we invite to see us crowned at school. Hey.